Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Pereira, pre-service music teacher, student of Westminster Choir College. When entering Westminster, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. In the beginning, it was all fun and music. And then, well, let's just say the music part is luckily still there. <laughs> no, but honestly, with the amount of work we do, and information we receive at the school, there is no way a graduating music education major won't get a job. <laughs> After a year of Westminster, I was enrolled in Critical Pedagogy 1, later 2 and 3. And these classes, my eyes were open to a whole new way of teaching. I was introduced to a structure that emphasized a shift in power in the class, or better, a balance in power. Students should have a say in their educations. Teachers are simply leaders that guide their students and inspire them to desire the, to learn more. With theories and facts based in science, psychological perspectives, behavioral studies, and numerous methods, we've slowly taken pieces that make most sense to us to create our own philosophies of why and how to become the best educators we can be. We're always perfecting and bettering our philosophies, but as of now, this is a little bit of my personal philosophy of music education. My philosophy of music education is greatly influenced by the pedagogical formats of Bennett Reamer, Bernice McCarthy, and John Dewey, the philosophical ideas of Paulo Freire, and the psychological theories of Lev Vygotsky along with the classroom ideas and methods of Orff Schulwerk and Lucy Green. There are many overlaps in these theories that create the ultimate equality between teacher and student. Education through music is very unique. Music is a part of human nature. It exists as a part of our universe. Even stars pulsate through creating sound waves through space. Music is around us in the world. It exists as a means of expression, order, and communication between living creatures. Humans naturally lean towards community, and to build community, people need to connect with each other. Music is one of these means of communication. As Bennett Reamer says, music exists as form sound expressive of human feeling. a unique experience because unlike many subjects, the aesthetic experience provided to students allows them to become involved regardless of their level. When I first learned about Bernice McCarthy's format, I was surprised to see how there were actually students that fit each category. I was so in it was so interesting to see the difference in learners. But what was most fascinating to me was learning about how we need to be aware of all these different learners and how to cater to each type in a lesson. For me, that put teaching on a whole new level, a much more challenging one, but I like a challenge. John Dewey believes it is necessary to teach the individual. Focusing on pragmatic application of the material in class is essential in uh, Dewey's theory. This material should aid in the growth of students as better members of society. This is great because as an educator, I actually want my students to take what they learn into the real world. But how can they do that if I teach them, if what I teach them has absolutely no practical application? Well, they can't. So that's why it's so important to consider each individual student's experience and life. We must allow them to bring their prior knowledge into the classroom and then allow them to build off of that knowledge. This leads me to one of my favorites, Paulo Freire. This man is the critical pedagogy god. He advocates for a shift in power in the classroom. According to Freire, equality in the classroom is a key component in creating a comfortable learning and teaching environment. Paulo Freire said, leaders who do not act dialogically, but insist on imposing their decisions, do not organize the people. They manipulate them. They do not liberate, nor are they liberated. They oppress. 
He supports a method where dialogue exists between professor and pupils. By creating this environment, the student and teacher educate, both grow, and learning occurs on both sides, the teacher being the guide. This brings me to Lev Vygotsky. This psychologist is known for the concept of the zone of proximal development, which is a space the student reaches between what they can do on their own and what they need a teacher's assistance for. Incorporating this into my teaching means I will expose my students to the amount they are capable of mastering with later additions that challenge them slowly. Critical pedagogy principles, in addition to this awareness, will allow for an environment that encourages creativity, community, equality, and respect. So when looking at important figures that directly correlate to music education, I find myself most drawn to uh, the Orff Schulwerk method and Lucy Green studies. The Orff method is heavy on movement, singing, speaking, and playing of instruments. Orff's method engages students in a light and fun environment. Students explore with improvisation when moving, singing, speaking, and playing. Over time, I have learned that informal improvisation is so important to the development of musicianship. Personally, it's how I learned a great deal of piano and guitar, just by being thrown into jam sessions. <laughs> Which leads me to Lucy Green and her informal learning process. She believes informal learning usually occurs in the home, is it's self-taught or peer-directed, students learn orally, and above all, it's all about personal choice. Green discovered that informal teaching methods are beneficial when introduced into formal school settings. She identified five characteristics used by popular musicians. One, the learner selects the music he wants to learn. Two, learning a course occurs orally. Three, there is collaborative work. Four, there is a holistic immersion in the learning process versus learning sequentially. And five, there is creation, performance, improvisation, and listening present from the start rather than starting with one simpler concept and building from there. All of this is so natural to the process of learning music and should without a doubt be incorporated into the music classroom. Still, these concepts are all relatively new in music education and so there are still many flaws in our field. Often the music classroom does not encourage students to be creative. Instead, they focus on providing a formal education where students have no say in what they learn. Often attempts to incorporate diverse selections of music in the classroom are failed because teachers are not prepared to do so and lack the knowledge of how to authentically provide these multicultural experiences. <clears throat> This is unfortunate because when a teacher is capable of providing a successful, diverse program, students benefit enormously. In Therese M. Volk's article, The Difficult Questions of Multiculturalism, she says, by studying the various cultures around the world, students can develop a better understanding of international relationships. There is so much growth capacity for students when they're exposed to different cultures. And these are a few of the roadblocks in music education. There are others, but these are some that I plan on ameliorating in my teaching. My passion is to expose students to a world of endless possibilities where they are free to create, explore, learn, and later reap the benefits of, their, of this education in other areas of their lives. I want my students to become knowledgeable while having an amazing time learning. I want them to become better communicators out in the real world. I want to equip them with the courage and audacity to try new things, not only in music, but throughout their lives. As an educator, I want to be a lifelong learner, growing day by day with my students. As a music educator, I want to inspire my students to see the beauty of the world through what they can learn, hear, and create with music. Thank you.